Hello and welcome to this short tutorial about how to apply motion blur to already rendered video. My name is Ben Hushner from Curious Turtle and we're going to look at this little piece of footage here which uh, comes courtesy of Trumax, www.trumax.com and so the job in front of us today is we're going to apply motion blur to this 3D render. So as you can see here uh, this little guy was rendered out without any sort of um, motion blur at all. So every frame is very, very sharp. So what we want to do now is we want to use After Effects to apply a motion blur. And there are a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, one of them is to use the CC Force Motion Blur plugin uh, that comes as part of the After Effects package. And if it's only one layer that we're wanting to affect, all we have to do is click on the layer, come to our effects up here, come to time and go to CC force motion blur. And now you'll see that actually really nothing's changed at the moment. That's because we need to make sure that another couple of settings are correct on the timeline for it to actually apply. So what we need to do is we need to turn frame blending on and we can do this um, on the timeline here. Now if you don't see this panel of, of buttons up here, what you need to do is come right down to the bottom left hand corner and just click on the little button down here and that will expand that pane out for you here. So what we're after is this button that's called uh, Frame Blend. So we click on that. Again, you'll see that nothing actually changes yet. Uh, that's because we've turned Frame Blending on for the layer, but we haven't turned it on for the composition. So let's do that. So we come up here and again, the one that looks a bit like a, like a film frame, and now you'll see that it's actually frame blending between the different between the different layers there. Um, we can come up to our CC force motion blur here, and the first thing we should do is actually uh, turn the samples up to to at least 16. 16 matches the the After Effects default uh, motion blur. Though of course the higher the motion blur uh, samples are, the smoother the motion blur appears but uh, it also takes a lot longer to render. Uh, so you'll see that actually it's a law of diminishing returns. So if you put it up too high, you'll get a, a very, very long render, but you won't actually see that much difference um, in the picture. And even here, you're seeing something that's a very, very crude way of blending between the frames themselves. And that's because we have our frame blending here turned on to draft blend mode. So if we turn this on to, on to full quality here, this is gonna take uh, an exceedingly long time, especially with our motion blur samples turned up to 64. But once it's rendered out, what you can see here is a very, very smooth motion blur uh, applied to the image. And again, what it's doing is just, um, it's just blurring and blending between, between the frames itself. So if I take that down now to 16 again, this is going to be a much faster render than it uh, than it previously was. So we come to our, our previous frame here. You can see my blue line is moving up a lot faster than it was before. Okay, so let's just give a uh, quick test render of this. So I'm going to hit zero on the number pad and just going to do a RAM preview. And through the magic of modern technology, you didn't have to wait through the... Uh, the very, very long render that I just had to there. So you can see the results actually are pretty good. So it is worth um, waiting through that, that render to, uh, to go through. And of course, if you take the motion blur samples down, it will be a slightly, uh, slightly shorter render. Now, the only problem with doing it this way is that it's not a, an intelligent filter. Uh, what I mean by that is it just blends frames together. So it doesn't really ha take into account anything inherent about the, uh, the image itself. Now there is another plugin uh, that will do this and that's uh, from a company called Real Smart called the Real Smart Motion Blur. Now not only will this uh, give you the motion blur effect that we had with the CC uh, Force Motion Blur, let's just come down to here and go to Real Smart there. Now what this will also do is it will also work with the vectors coming out of your 3D program. Now, 
I'm not going to go through uh, a whole long list of, of how you do that because if we come to the uh, revision effects uh, support things here, each 3D program has a slightly different way of, of getting the motion vectors out. So what I'd recommend doing if you wanted to do this is go to www.revisioneffects.com support FAQs motion underscore vector underscore FAQs slash motion underscore vectors. So have a look there and it will give you a nice step-by-step -step guide about how to get uh, the motion vectors out of your out of your system there. But if we come back here and we just have a look, we will take us to the to the end point here. And the blur amount is, is set up quite high. It's set to uh, to 0.5, so it always sets it fairly high. So you can see what the uh, what it's really doing. We can take it down to to 0.25 or up. It's all a case of personal uh, personal preference. But if we have a look here. Uh, at this point where the hands really aren't moving very much, you've really got almost no blur in them at all, but you've still got a nice bit of blur going on in the rest of the rest of the body there. Now if we compare this to the same time in the force motion blur, so 116, you'll see in in this rendering here we've got some slight artifacting with the uh, with the tail. So you can see that the tail is sort of ghosted uh, and we've got a bit of ghosting, but that's that's the way that the, the motion blur works. The real smart motion blur, anything where there's not a lot of movement is going to still be sharp. So you can see the tail there is still sharp without any of that, that same sort of ghosting. Now, of course, if you don't have real smart motion blur, the force motion blur here, especially when you um, when you see it at full speed, looks actually really, really good. The only price you pay is the rendering time um, and it will take a long time to render. Now another thing you should notice about the motion blur is if we have any other effects on it, for example let's just do a, uh, let's just do a box blur to show, show you that and put the motion blur underneath. If we do have any other effects on it the motion blur will knock those effects out. Um, so it won't show any other effects apart from uh, the CC force motion blur. So if we wanted it to take into account some of the other effects, in fact, what I'm going to do here is apply a color correction just so so you can see it very plainly. So let's turn our monster uh, red and do the same thing. So apply the CC force motion blur. You can see he's green again. Now, what we could do is we could pre-compose this layer. Um, so we can come here and go layer, pre-compose, and then move all attributes into the new composition. Or another way around it is uh, if we want to apply it to all, the, to all the layers and all the effects, is to come to layer, new adjustment layer, and then apply the CC force motion blur to our adjustment layer. And so you can see here, our creature is still red, but we do have the motion blur going on as well. Cool, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly render these out. So if we have a look now at the, the difference in the render times, well, what you've got is the CC force motion blur took about two and a half minutes. Now, if you compare that uh, to the real smart motion blur taking only 42 seconds, um, that's you know that's a huge huge difference, um, and this is only two seconds worth of footage, of course. So this is the real smart motion blur one. You see a very very nice motion blur going on, and we compare this again to the CC force uh, force motion blur over the top. You can see a lot of the time the difference is is very minimal. All you've all you've got is the um, is the increased render time, and sometimes you've got a bit of ghosting when the movement's quite extreme. We'll take a look at the ears as well. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, CC force motion blur and real smart motion blur. So both of them are good solutions and a very easy way to to cheat motion blur in After Effects as opposed to doing it with your 3D program. So thanks for listening and good luck with your programs.